Hey guys, Bernice here, and today we are playing Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm playing on my Jedi Sage. If you want to see the, uh, if you want to know my talent build, um, my spec, then click the link in the description below. Anyway, instead of talking about the gameplay, I'm going to be talking about something else, and that topic is uh, patch 1.2. Currently, we're on, uh, well, as the recording of this video, we're on patch 1.1.4. The new updated patch notes for 1.1.5 have just come out, um, and so they're looking pretty good. However, um, the main talk in SWATL nowadays is pretty much mainly about patch 1.2. And why is this? Um, well, I'm about to explain. There are a lot of new things coming up in patch 1.2. A lot, lot, lot of new things, and uh, they're going to look very good. There's, um, they, they haven't all been finalized. There are some that they have definitely mentioned they're going to be putting into the game. There are some that have been um, uh, talked about, rumored, basically. Uh, so I'm gonna go over a, a couple of those things and just uh, express my opinion on them as you do uh, Okay, first one we have is dual spec now I saw this on a, um, a forum and a, cu a couple of other websites that they were saying that in uh, 1.2 uh, There was a and a with the developers and one of the developers was talking about um, was answering a question about dual spec and Basically he was saying that we do not intend to allow you to change your advanced class however, we do eventually want to allow you to have two different specs. Now this is a great thing, uh, for example my class, because then I can go healer and DPS, or um, if I'm focusing on DPS for raiding purposes, I can have two specs for different fights, and it just it just makes the whole fight easier and it makes the cost a lot less, um, which I think is very important. Um, however, no particular final word on that, um, however, hopefully they should bring it out. If not in 1.1.2, I can foresee it coming in the next months afterwards. Um, however, still, there's no way to tell, I suppose. But anyway, the next one we're going to go over is the Legacy Family Tree. Now, they uh, have discussed this in a video. Uh, the video was um, what is coming up in Star Wars The Old Republic, and it was made by Bioware, and uh, it's on their website. If you want to go check it out, I'll probably put a link in the description if I remember. Uh, if not, I'm sorry. And, you know, bug me in the comments and say, PUT THE LINK IN! And I'll, you know, put the link in. Uh, but anyway, this one is talking about the legacy family tree. And basically what that is, is they want to add a new prospect to the legacy. Now, uh, for those of you who don't know or haven't played up to this part or haven't played SWAT all, um, legacy, basically, when you finish Act 2 of your main quest line, your storyline, um, you get to choose a legacy name. Uh, actually, sorry, I think it's Act 1. You get to choose your legacy name at the end of it. Um... And your legacy name pretty much defines you. I'm not showing mine in this video here. I'll see if I can um, point one out. For example, that person there, I, I know the camera's a bit shaky, but that Sage, it had Master, which was their title, Space, their name, and then Space, their legacy. Um, now, your legacy pretty much defines you as a character in the way that your name does, because one legacy um, is permanent to you, and pretty much defines you because no one else can have that particular legacy name. Um, however, your alt can, which is a really good way to tell if uh, you're on an alt, um, just generally if you're going to make an alt then people can know who you are um, and stuff like that basically. Uh, so what they intend to do in this next patch is allow you to have a sort of family tree system where um, let's say I'm on Burnished, which is obviously my main, but then I make an alt who's a Jedi Knight, and we'll call him uh, Bob or Ted. And basically, Bob or Ted is my brother. And um, there will be, uh, I'm assuming, a quest line to go along with this about myself, um, as in I'll be playing on Bob, and it will say, Oh, you have a new quest. Burnished has asked you to do this. Um, you know, and like he'll be my brother, or I'll be his father, or you know, stuff like that. And um, so, also along with this, they did mention that it gives you rewards. Um, so I'm assuming if you do the legacy quest, then you get some sort of rewards. They were talking about new abilities. I'm pretty sure in the video. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something to check out. Um, so that's that's going to be pretty interesting. I have always loved the storyline in Swatol. Um, every Every cutscene that mattered, I say that a bit harshly, um, but cutscenes to do with my class quest, I would watch thoroughly, and uh, even the daily quest that I do on Ilum now, and 
Bell Service, I listen to the storyline behind those because they do have amazing storylines. And um, so I think this would be quite fun, I suppose. Uh, should probably hurry up. <laughs> anyway, next one is a new war zone. A new war zone is going to be released. Um, we have no particular idea what it is. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be uh, faction v faction. We don't know if it's going to be uh, allowed to be like Jedi versus Jedi or Sith versus Sith. Or if it's just going to be purely Jedi versus Sith. Um, however, new war zones definitely a plus. There are currently only three war zones, so I'm definitely looking forward to a fourth one because uh, it does get a bit stale just playing the same war zone over and over. Well, sort of, you know. Uh, so that's going to be interesting. Along with war zones, now that I'm talking about it, we get rated war zones. Yes, uh, they pretty much have said that this is coming in patch 1.2. Um, it's pretty much definite, but don't hold me to that because I know you probably will. Um, but they have said that 1.2, uh, they're bringing out something to do with PvP, to do with rating, and it's probably going to be rated war zones. Basically, that's what they've been saying. And now, uh, rated war zones are going to be fun, I reckon, because it basically, um, the problem I see with Swattle, which I'm going to go over in another video later on, uh, is that we need goals in this game. And I think rated war zones is definitely a great way to get people inspired to play the game, inspired to do PvP. Um, you know, just general things like that. Uh, it's it's always a good laugh as well. You can do it with your guild. You can, you know, get your rating up. It basically just shows how good of a PvP you are. Currently, there's no real way to tailor that. Um, I suppose you could say by Valor, but with um, Ilum, the way it is, there's been people trading, uh, you know, even through the updates through Ilum. There's been people constantly trading kills just for Honor. Uh, sorry, not Honor, Valor. And so, you know, Valor is still a pretty pretty indeterminate way to tell if someone is good at PvP or not. This, however, will change things because it will basically allow us to say, you know, I'm 2000 rating, you're only 1800 rating, I'm slightly better than you, you know. And it's always good to, um, you know, be competitive in games like this and, you know, you can swag and you can, you can put your gloat face on and, yeah, make people mad. That's always good. Um, and fourth thing, no, sorry, fifth thing is character transfers uh they have not mentioned this uh officially however they have said in the QA, 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 Q and Q and A that they will um be uh sorting this out and they will po probably be bringing it out don't know if it's going to happen patch 1.2 i've i've definitely seen some rumors <coughs> sorry spreading around that it's going to be coming out in 1.2 that you'll be able to uh by character transfers by the way i mean Transferring your your character, so like my Burnished, from one server to another server. Um, I doubt this will be able to go from NA to EU, so the North American realms to the European realms, but if it could, that'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, I think this is really needed, because what happened during the start of the game was that um, certain po uh, servers got populated and some servers didn't get populated. Um, for example, my server... Uh, didn't get populated at all. It was, um, it's still dead today. It's, uh, I think it's about the fourth lightest server uh, that currently is. You know, at peak times we see maybe 37 people on the Republic fleet. Um, it's, it's just really, really terrible. And this is not only bad, um, you know, because you ob obviously you want more people. Uh, it does mean less lag, which is quite nice. But I'm in a raiding guild at the moment because there aren't any rated BGs. Uh, so when I go raiding, I haven't been able to raid f properly for at least a month now uh, because we haven't been able to find any healers or we've been missing a DPS. And, you know, this is just for eight-man raiding as well. Um, it's a bit ridiculous that we haven't been able to find some, pe uh, some people. And this is because people realize that our server is low population and these people don't particularly mind leveling up a new character. So they decide to go switch to a highly populated server that's heavy whenever they're online or whatever and then they go level up a character on there so that means the servers uh the really high servers are getting really populated but then the lower servers are getting even less populated because they're being um because people are moving away from them and i suppose this would sort of help that because then there'll be there's some people that don't particularly like heavy servers 
and we come to lower populated servers there's some people who don't like low populated servers and we go to higher populated servers um, but I think along with character transfers they also need to include something like um, a low population transfer this transfer should be free and you should be able to go to any of the uh, light uh, populated servers so for example my server is often light so I think people should be able to transfer to this and you know come on this server it basically means we can have more people Raiding will be easier, raid war zones will be easier, etc, etc. Um, and plus, if there was character transfer, I'd be moving to one of the high populated servers. Simply because we do not have enough people for raiding, and it's just a big down on the game. I haven't been playing it that much, that's why there hasn't been many war zone videos, because it's just... It's no fun to play, because I'm usually solo queuing, um, even though I'm Republic, which is the underplayed uh, race, uh, no, faction, you know, it still takes me, like... 20 minutes to get a war zone in peak times it's, it's a bit ridiculous and that's not because there's so many people queuing it's because there's so little people queuing you can't get a full group we usually end up with six people you know and then someone leaves and it's down to five people it's, it's just so ridiculous you can't get a bg in it's it's a lot difficult it's a lot more difficult than it used to be um what else what else what else uh got it written down on my notepad here more rare crystals yes they're planning to add this into patch 1.2 and this is uh, adding basically uh, more rare crystals and rare crystals that were made unavailable. So, for um, for example, uh, the white color crystal that's been made unavailable pretty much. I'm pretty sure. Um, I haven't been able to see anyone get it yet. Uh, but yeah, the white color crystal, which I'm looking forward to, and I'm pretty sure they'll have other crystals. I don't know. I don't know my colors. Maybe they'll have a brown lightsaber. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so they'll definitely have uh, more rare crystals in patch 1.1.5, which is the next one which is coming out this Tuesday. Uh, so actually next Tuesday, because it's next week. Uh, they are going to be adding in all of those... Um, they're going to be adding in all of those crystals to vendors, so you can go buy those crystals and all that stuff. Uh, and I just realized the BG has come to an end. Uh, nice eight medals there. Pro source. Um, but really quickly, I want to go over the last thing that I found, and it's a matching equipment. And by the, what I mean by that is hue to the chest. Now, hue is basically coloring. What they've said they're going to be implementing is basically you can color your armor. So if you're tired of being the Jedi with the brown robes, you can color your robes black, or at least that's what I'm assuming. Uh, so that's definitely going to be fun, and it's going to add a lot of variation and customization to the game. And it's going to make it overall a better game, I suppose. Anyway, guys, that was my patch 1.2 video. Um, leave in the comment section anything you found out, and I'll be sure to look over it. Um, anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.